And welcome back. Welcome back to the Out of the Park Developments channel. My name is Alex Murray, also known as Easy Axel, and I'll be your host for, again, this Science Saturday here on, what is today, anyways, September 26th. Good grief, guys. Time is flying. 
I remember when it was literally just the beginning of the season. Well, you know, maybe a couple of months into the regular season, into the, uh, you know, new year at this point. And now it's already September. Good grief, how time has flown. I mean, it's only been about a month since we started this entire project, also known as the Backyard Project, and we were able to get all these kids imported and do all this nice, fun stuff. And we're only through the month of May for our simulation. So let's jump right into it. We're going to do a shorter, <laughs> a little bit of a uh, shorter intro today so we can get into some stuff. And I do need to make one confession right off the bat. Uh, I have a confession to make, unfortunately. I took a look at our game to watch today, which was going to be the Durham Goats versus the Murfreesboro Marmots. And I realized it was going to be pretty boring. Um, <laughs> it was going to be really boring. Both teams were 8-8, eight and eight, so that was kind of cool. You know, it was the middle of the pack teams, which... Depending upon how you see the middle of the pack teams, they could either be really good or really boring. But the problem was that the matchup was going to be Angela Del Vecchio versus Greg Maddox. And both teams also had hitters as well. The uh, the Marmots have got Ichiro Suzuki, and the Durham Goats have got Albert Pujols. So it was going to be, you know, stacked full of, of, of names you guys know and everything. But... Both of the pitchers had above 4.5 ERAs. It was not going to be a pitcher's duel. Um, so unfortunately, I simmed it. <laughs> because I looked ahead, and in a week, there was a much better game for us to watch. So instead of watching the Marmots and Goats, we are going to watch a different team, which I'll talk about in a second here. Because it's going to be a lot more fun. Uh, is the Backyard League ever coming as a league to play in? Yes, you can already get the league if you type in the uh, chat. In fact, I should have brought this up in the past couple of streams. If you type into chat, exclamation mark, Backyard, there actually is a quick start that has been posted uh, in the Discord, and there's actually a link on the uh, chat. Yeah, there you go. So as you can see, there's a link at the end of that... Um, Ha uh, exclamation mark backyard chat command and you can actually get uh oh do I not have a uh, <laughs> don't be spamming it please <laughs> otherwise I'll never be able to read chat um, but um, if you want the league you can download that um, you can download the files from the link at the end of that little ch command and you can actually play this yourself it'll download the dot quick files and you guys can play this exact league yourself this is right after the uh, right after the the draft at that point um if i knew how to do stream stream elements correctly in terms of how to do their um the cooldowns i would but i have to look up the commands for that and i unfortunately do not have time uh dish can i have can i ask you to or uh, crazy to look into that to see if we can change that with a command prompt or something while i work on the rest of the stream here um, I would appreciate that greatly if you guys could do that for me. Otherwise, yes, anybody who's looking for the league files, you can download them directly from the link at the end of that command. And you guys should be able to jump straight into it as a quick start. I think there's a way to do cooldown request changes. Um, a user-friendly interface, uh, interface online? Uh, it wouldn't be so much that. It would be, uh, which commands would you have to plug in to give it an actual cooldown, um... From what I remember, there is a way to do that, but I don't recall what the... Uh, okay, no worries. No worries, Dishnet. I'll look into it. If not, I mean, we're, we're not in the bigger streams where there's, you know, 700, 800, 900 people. We're going to be looking at probably only at maximum about 300, 400, so no worries. No worries. I highly doubt we'll have any problems with that. Plus, the people will want to download the files anyway, so either who. Either who. Let's get started. So let me go ahead and um, talk about what we're going to be doing instead. Yeah, because a lot of the other uh, uh, commands have cooldowns. And I guess when I added two new commands, they don't have cooldowns, I guess. So I've got a, one more thing for me to do for the day at this point. I have to get more command cooldowns added to the couple of things that I've added. So, oh well. Oh well. All right. So allow me to say what I've done. So I did look ahead. So I had to simulate two whole entire games on the schedule. I had to simulate May 27th and May 31st because we wanted to take a look at 
this game. This game is going to be really, really fun. This is the Houston Apollos at the Downey Ducks. And you can see from their records, things have not gone so well for Houston. Houston is 12-6. and six. They're 4-4 four and four on the road. And they're going to be throwing Pedro Martinez up against Jay Green. And I thought, what better matchup could you possibly ask for than potentially the two best pitchers in the league right now? So... Why not? So let me go over what happened for the past two simulations that we otherwise would have missed. So let's talk a little bit about May 27th. Let's go ahead and unhide the scores. And this was the results of the 27th. The Toronto Giants lost 6-7 to against the Bismarck Mythics. Brockton and Uma Morris had home runs, but the Mythics were able to squeak by with the one-run victory behind Tetcher. They had 16 hits over the eight hits of the Giants. The Whistlers behind uh, technically Abenduct uh, beat the Memphis Kings 3-2. to Jake Green totally sounds like he could have been a killer pitcher from the late 1990s. Absolutely. I mean, because he sounds close to Sean Green, who we do actually have Sean Green in the game too. Uh, the Warlocks actually upset the Virginia Beach Captains uh, as they won 3-2, to scoring a run in the ninth inning which was amazing for them. Solo shots to Peters and, and O'Connor, the only run support for Fuller. Or was that Hellerman? That was Hellerman, I believe. Uh, the Koalas lost in the 11th inning to the Portland Pioneers. Uh, Hoffman, Seth Hoffman, has three home runs over the course of an 11-inning game, which I believe means he also, I, I think he might have walked the team off in the 11th. So a big day. For Seth Hoffman. So if you're Seth Hoffman's creator, congratulations. The Goats end up winning the game 6-5, to five, the one we would have watched. But both pitchers really don't do much, unfortunately. So it would not have been a pitcher's duel. It would have been a comeback victory, though, for the Goats. So it would have been, it would have been interesting to watch. But I wasn't that interested in either team at that time. The Queens did beat the Squirrels 5-1. to one. Uh, good pitching performance from Bosworth beating Christina Beatty, which is amazing because Beatty's been great so far this season. Uh, the Downey Ducks defeated the Lansing Robins 4-3, to just barely eking by them. The Coral Springs Manatees, get used to that name, guys. The Coral Springs Manatees are throwing their weight around a little bit. Uh, they beat the Louisville Swatters 3-0 behind Randy Johnson. I believe he went seven or eight innings, and then, of course, Dontrell Willis comes in for his seventh save of the season so far. And the Cluckers could not prevail against the Apollos, losing 6-5 to five after scoring three runs in the last two innings. Uh, Bryant had two homers for the Apollos. That's Shovel Bryant, by the way. Big Fly, Bull Green, and uh, Parker Collum all had homers for Kansas City. So that brought us to May 31st. The Marmots def or def were defeated by the Manatees, moving the Manatees to 12-6 and six as they won 6-4 to four over the Marmots. Homers to Cordova, Allen, Chico Papas, Marcellus Marks had a homer for the Marmots. The Memphis Kings did defeat the Portland Pioneers. They won them against them 4-0. Good, strong performance by Hudson. That brought the Memphis, Ki Memphis Kings back up near the top of the list at 11-7. The Giants beat the Squirrels. The Squirrels have fallen hard in the last couple of days, unfortunately. They won them against them 11-5. to I didn't get the win pitching that game, but I at least was able to do a good enough job that we actually got the win. Uh, homers to Peavy for the Toronto Giants, and then Fabic had his fifth homer for the Squirrels. The Windsor Whistlers won their game 5-2 over the Cluckers, so the Cluckers continue to stay around 500 only. Homers to Garcia Parra and Tony Gwynn Sr., uh, Parker Collum and Xavier were the uh, homers for the Kansas City Cluckers. Yes, Shooter McGavin has been unhittable. He's been a very good pitcher so far this entire season. The Houston Apollos, however, lost to the Lansing Robins at, away at Lansing Robins Park. A uh, score of 9-6, to six, they lost, only having four hits. Pico de Gallo threw a masterful game against Houston. Uh, Screwball just got a little bit messed up, but uh, homers to Shovel Bryant, his ninth of the season, and Heffernan, her sixth of the season. 
Uh, Woodruff, Vaughn, and Beltron. Beltron having two homers in that game for the Robins. The Downey Ducks lost to the Queens Noble, so the Ducks had a chance. The Ducks could have tied with the Houston Apollos, but they lose 4-5 to five against the Queens Nobles. Pete Wheeler hitting his third homer of the season as the, uh, season as the Nobles go to 10-8, and eight, which is ridiculous because we thought they were not that good. So that's interesting. Uh, they obviously, I mean, you say they suck, but I don't think, I don't think they're doing that bad. The uh, Virginia Beach captains continue to just win ba- win games when they need to as they defeated the Bismarck Mythics 12-2. to uh, Homers for Murray, Floyd, Guerrero, and Epps. Lewis with his seventh homer of the season. That was Kurt Floyd's uh, Kurt Floyd's uh, sixth homer of the season, and Guerrero's sixth as well. Watch offense, and are only looking for a pitcher's duel. Uh, mostly because a lot of the pitchers are um, either elite elites or they're really, really bad. Like, you'll notice a lot of pitchers are either, like, in the five, sixes, or sevens, or they're, like, 3.5 or below. Um, so a lot of times we're looking for... Um, less offense because a lot of these games, because of the fact that the offenses are so high and the pitching quality drops off so much, once you get to the relief pitchers, runs just become plentiful. Like a lot of teams come back in the eighth, ninth inning. So you almost have to watch out for pitchers that are going to go an entire game. Now, we are going to watch some hitters games very soon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The There are good, definitely going to be some hitter conquest game that we will definitely be watching. Um, but I just want to touch on some of the highlightable pitching matchups. And then as we get past the halfway point of the season, then we'll jump into the hitting matchups. Cause it's kind of nice to see the good pitchers first, and then we'll swing around and do the good hitters afterwards. Cause right now, some of the hitters are still developing as well. Um, for example, we would have been watching Ken Griffey Jr. And the Houston Apollos because Ken Griffey Jr., was leading the league in homers at nine, like maybe a couple of weeks ago. I think he was. Yeah, he was at nine, and he's kind of done nothing since then. We've also seen nothing from Pablo Sanchez. Speaking of Pablo Sanchez, his team lost again, 11-4. to four. Pablo is, again, just not on the board in terms of home runs. The Koalas moved to 8-10, and 10, and they have one of the best offenses, supposedly. The Goats, I guess, have a better offense, because Unger had two home runs, and they moved to 10-8, and eight, and the Koalas moved to 8-10. and 10. The Swatters did defeat the Salem Warlocks, so the Warlocks are now officially the worst team in the league at 6-12. and 12. The Swatters beat them 2-0 behind Shooter McGavin. A great performance from him. The save going to Radke. So, yeah, we'll definitely see some... Uh, We'll definitely look at pitchers' duels down the road. Don't worry about that. We'll, or uh, hitters, hitters, hitters' conquests. We'll definitely look at those down the road. All right, so I've simmed everything for this week. Everything for this week has been simulated so far. Oh, gosh, what is the Backyard Project? So the Backyard Project, really, 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 really fast before we jump into this week. The Backyard Project is based around the Backyard Baseball series, which had a bunch of kids that played on the PC and Mac back in the late 2000s. Um, and, er, well, yeah, li- no, the early 2000s to the late 2000s. It was a game called Backyard Baseball, developed by Humongous Entertainment. Very, very fun game for anyone who was uh, growing up during that time frame. So we imported all of the Backyard Baseball kids from Pablo Sanchez to Pete Wheeler. All these Backyard Baseball kids got imported. We imported all of the generic kids as well. And then we added in user-submitted players. So all the people, like Benjamin Abenduct, Tom Glass, uh, who else has been custom created at this point? You're talking about, I think McCattery is custom created. Uh, Pachasa is custom created. Um, I know that, who else is custom created? I know there's a lot of people who got actually added. Ah, go for them. Gofanen was custom made. Yeah, generic kids. They're called generic because I don't know how else to call them. I mean, the back, they're not the backyard kids because the backyard kids are people, you know, like Pete Wheeler and Stephanie Morgan and Tony, uh, you know, Tony and Angela Del Vecchio. These are backyard kids, the people who are actually in the baseball game that you played as a kid. Um, you know, so it's, I, I don't like calling them generic kids, but, uh, you know, it's, 
they are generic kids. They, they, they don't have any, like, history. They just simply were made to play alongside the backyard kids in the old game. So they're the sub-kids. That, does that make it any better? No, not really. Actually, the generic kids were actually really good, especially people like Leo Wayne. Leo Wayne and uh, the person we're about to watch, Jay Green, are some of the best neighborhood kids. There you go. That's how we'll say them. The neighborhood kids who basically just piled on after the, the elite kids got, you know, pulled into the, the circle. Anywho, anywho, we'll move on from that before we, before we, say, before we degrade our, our neighborhood kids any, any worse. So for this week... The Robins won against the Whistlers, so unfortunately, Abin Duck, even though he went eight innings and 17 strikeouts, did not get the win as they lost score, uh, giving up six runs in the ninth inning and losing nine to three. Homers to Jones, Beltron, and Mills for the Lansing Robins, and then the Petrovich's or the Petrovich homer for the Whistlers was their only long ball of the day. The Marmots did defeat the Warlocks in extra innings. Greg Maddox got player of the game. A good day for the Marmots to finally separate themselves from the back end of the pack. The Toronto Giants defeated the Queens Nobles. A homer by Brock in the eighth inning sparked a five-run rally. As the Queens Nobles are defeated and moved to 10-9, and nine, the Toronto Giants moved to 8-11. and 11. The Sp uh, Coral Springs Manatees do defeat the Kanata Koalas 8-7 to on a walk-off at home, moving them to 13-6 and and in sole possession at the moment of first place. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, your Coral Springs Manatees are first. Let that sink in for a second before we jump into our game and see if the Apollos can tie them. So, anywho... They scored eight runs on 15 hits. Homers to Frank Thomas. Captain Tennille had a homer. Very good job right there by both of those guys. The Swatters were upset by the Mythics, who rallied in the ninth inning to score two runs and win it. Gagne gets the win, goes to 2-2. Two and two. Rodriguez has a homer, his second of the season. Tim Gross has his fourth homer of the season for Louisville. The Virginia Beach captains are absolutely shocked and upset by the Centennial Squirrels 2-0 as the Virginia Beach captains do not manage to tie the Coral Springs Manatees at 13-6 as they fall to 12-7. Uh, the Centennial Squirrels definitely needed this win right here as they move to 9-10. and the Memphis Kings do win against the Durham Goats. Angela Del Vecchio loses her fifth game of the season as Leo Wayne pitches a marvelous three-hit, one-run. I think it was almost a complete game. 8.2 innings pitched. The Memphis Kings move to 12-7. and seven. The Durham Goats move to 10-9. and nine. Uh, Memphis has homers by Guffinen and Munson to back up their claims. That's 8-6. and six. For both of those guys, respectively. And the Portland Pioneers have upset the Kansas City Cluckers. 4-2-3. This is definitely one of the, the worser teams. Uh, worser? I mean, how would you say? The Portland, the Portland Pioneers have not been very good so far this season, guys. All right? Literally, they have been one of the worst teams outside of maybe. I mean, outside of, of course, Salem. Salem is 6-13. and They're, They are in the doghouse now. But Portland, you know, has won a couple of scrappy victories, and that's been good. The worstest. Yes, the worstest. So they finally win 4-3 to three over the Kansas City Cluckers. They, they have been the worst team. That is technically the correct grammatical way of saying that. So anywho, our standings moving into the last game of June 3rd look like this. The Manatees in sole possession of first place at the moment. The Apollos and the Downey Ducks looking to duke it out for second place or potentially a tie for first place right here. This would be the only team that could go 11 and 8. We only have uh, one team at 6 and 13. We've got a lot of teams at 8 and 11. So you can see the, the standings so far have some elite teams. We've added more teams to those elite listings. Um... Maybe taking your name from a horrific event where many people thought wasn't the best choice. I mean, hey, at this point, maybe it's what they earned, deserved. I don't, I don't know. Uh, that was just how they got imported. So, well, and and the logo was built up 
that way technically it, it actually is i mean it could be a lot worse it could it could be the the the, uh, the other type of of you know mythical person that i never would have said uh, I, I would never have accepted that warlocks are barely okay but yeah yeah and again maybe for season two maybe i'll change some team names around maybe the warlocks Maybe they do think that it's just too much karma, and they uh, decide to change their name and location to better influence a better result in the next season. Maybe that's what we go for for them. Because again, we're going to be doing a season two, and uh, move them to Cape Cod. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. I'll I'll look at uh, moving some teams around, and if we don't like some of the teams, maybe uh, they look for, they look for a new a new identity in season two. So anywho, anywho. We are going to watch the Houston Apollos, who are 12 and 6, go up against the Downey Ducks, who are 11 and 7. The Ducks are 8 and 1 at home, and the Houston Apollos are only 4 and 4 on the road. This is going to be Pedro Martinez. Pedro Martinez versus Jay Green as our starting pitcher. So let's just jump right into this because this is going to be fun. So. The lineups look like this. You've got Tommy Pickles, Ian Levitt, Shovel Bryant, and Ken Griffey Jr., Peggy Heffernan, Sean Green, Richie Sexton, Wally Evans, and Pedro Martinez for the Houston Apollos. For the Ducks, we will be having Pete Wheeler, Supernova, Jason Giambi, Todd Helton, Barry Larkin, Stan Olofsson, Linus Riverboat, Jay Green, and Frankie Holly. To be honest, yeah, the uh, batting averages are a little bit underperforming. At least your LBP is a little bit better at 286. You've been at least putting the ball in play. It's hard when you are not starting all the time because, of course, they're going to be throwing... Um, who does Houston normally throw? Is it Beatty? Sturges. Normally, Matilda, Matilda Sturges plays. I don't actually know why she's not playing today. That's actually kind of weird. I don't know why. Maybe they want better defense? Yeah, I guess they want better defense today. So, uh, Levitt playing over Sturges, which I actually didn't recognize that they were doing that. But anywho, uh, yeah. If only we had the big freeze and fireball pitches. Actually, technically, that was one of the power-ups you could have selected uh, when you made your team, or your player, sorry. Uh, I allowed people to add stuff like I think the big freeze was a circle changeup that got added to your pitching repertoire. Fireball pitchers had additional two notches to their uh, to their velocity and additional fastball ability. So I actually do have I do actually have those pitches technically in the game. All right, guys, let's watch this game really fast. Let's see what happens between the Apollos and the. Ducks. All right, welcome to the stadium. I forgot I didn't put these back. I was watching some games yesterday on my widescreen, and I forgot I had to put them back. There we go. All right. This is Hadlock Field. Congratulations to the Ducks and the Apollos for making it this far at this point. We'll be seeing Jay Green versus Pedro Martinez, of which Pedro Martinez is really, really good, and so is Jay Green. These are, these are probably the two best pitchers in the league, if you don't count Abenduct as, you know, an, uh, as, as probably the best pitcher in the league. So, let's get started, shall we? Jay Green pitching here in the top of the first inning. That'll be an easy ground out, and that'll take care of Pickles. Levitt up next. He's going to swing and miss on the elevated fastball at 94. Nice pitch right there by Jay Green to bring it up over the letters. Up the middle, but the short stops right there to make the play. Nice job by Larkin to retire the side. So Shovel Bryant can't put the ball in play past the infield, and we'll be able to go to the bottom of the first. Chance for Pedro Martinez to up, up to the uh, to the mound, and let's see what he can do. Wheeler grounds out to the second baseman as his intro music plays in the background. Easy play right there by Evans, who throws a Sexton and retires the speedy Pete Wheeler. Up next, Supernova. Oh, I thought I changed this. There we go. 
Up next, Supernova. Hitter number two for the... <laughs> People are hearing the, the music finally. Yes, I added theme songs for every single one of the kids. Yes, they are now officially in the game, but they'll only play if they're home. So we'll have that for playoffs and other stuff as well. Jason Giambi, last chance here in the bottom of the first inning for the Downey Ducks up against Pedro Martinez. Pedro gets him looking. Nice job right there by Pedro Martinez for a very quick first inning. So we'll head to the second. Griffey Jr., Heffernan and Green up here against Jay Green at this point. And Ken's going to lace a single to left field. Giambi gets the ball back in play, and that'll be a leadoff single for Ken Griffey Jr. Heffernan up next, 81 power. Ken takes his lead over at first base. This is ground over to the second baseman, and they'll have to go to first as Griffey had a good lead and was able to get over to second base before a throw could be made. So that'll leave a runner on second base for Sean Green. The Greens go at it. Jay versus Sean. And the winner is going to be Sean as he plumps a single to left field. Giambi up with the ball, throws it back into the cutoff, and they'll hold Griffey at third base. So a single for Sean Green over Jay Green. And the Houston Apollos looking to break open the game here in the top of the second inning. Saxon, though, strikes out on the slider. Good called pitch right there by Jay Green and his catching duo of Linus Riverboat. Good job. Brings up Sexton, bringing it down to Wally Evans. Let's see if Evans can do anything about this. Out towards center. Lazy fly ball, though. In comes the center fielder. I believe it's Wheeler. He'll make the play, and that'll retire this side. So no chance here for the Houston Apollos to be able to score any runs. They leave them on first and third, though. We'll head to the bottom of the second inning. The Ducks will have Helton, Larkin, Olafson, and this thing keeps moving. Why, why is this keeping on moving? Stay. Stay. Helton up first here in the bottom of the second inning. He's going to put it down the line in left field. This might be the extra bases. Around in the corner it goes. In comes to the cutoff man, and Helton will have a stand-up double. So that'll put him in a good position for the Downey Ducks as they have Barry Larkin and Stan Olafson up next against Pedro Martinez. Pedro wheels and deals and out to right field. Hit well, but Larkin's going to come up short as it goes up near the warning track. But a nice play right there by Levitt. He'll make the little jogging grab out in left field. Yeah, I'm looking forward to these games that they're advertising, like the uh, the Rockies and the Cubs at 8.05, which uh, that's that's not going to happen in this league. Anywho, Stan Olofsson, one man down. Pedro Martinez now at 18 pitches here in the bottom of the second inning. Olafson strikes out on the really nice changeup down and away. Couldn't do a thing with that pitch right about there. Nicely done by Pedro Martinez. That was a full count, too, I believe. That'll leave it up to Linus Riverboat to be able to score the runner from second base. Let's see if the Ducks can actually get it through. Oh, that's going to be a hit by pitch. <laughs> he wears it on the back, unfortunately. Uh, an 0-2 pitch right there by Martinez. And that one got well away from him, unfortunately. And that'll leave it up to now Jay Green, the pitcher who can mash the ball as well. Woof. The D-backs actually play the Rockies tonight. Jay Green, two men down in the top, in the bottom of the second inning. Little grounder in front of home plate. Catcher makes the play, fires it over to first, and that will strand the runners, unfortunately. So... Nothing doing for the Ducks or Apollos, even though they had runners in scoring position each. And we'll head to the top of the third. Jay Green, 28 pitches so far this evening. Gets Martinez striking out on a four pitch at bat. Nice changeup right there, giving Martinez a dose of his own memory, of his own uh, abilities right about there. This is the actual gameplay for OTP. That is correct. This is actual gameplay. And it looks a lot better than it did years ago. Trust me on that. But it's no MLB of the show. I'll give you guys that much as well. But I think it's great. For as much of it as it is a strategy simulator, I'm really happy with the way it looks. Single for Pickles, though. That'll leave a runner on first base who's very, very fast. That's actually really good. They're showing the Major League scores because the Backyard Baseball League is funded by the MLB. Well, I mean, we might be a sub-league of the MLB. We just don't talk about that. Levitt will ground it over to third base. Nice play with the third baseman. Over to first he goes, and a nice play right there. Supernova with the amazing range over at third, diving to his left. Gets up, throws out. Uh, 
throws Hootie throughout. That was Levitt. And Levitt's pretty fast, too. Oh, man. Oh, if you're talking about the camera angles, you can edit those in the edit ballpark. Um, I can't do that, unfortunately, right now. I rock this. I'm in the middle of a game. So once we're done, once we're done the game here, I'll show you guys what we do for our, um, for our FOV and camera angles and stuff. Because we do some editing on these. So that'll leave it up to uh, Shovel Bryant, runner on second base. So again, the Houston Apollos have a chance to score a run here against Jay Green, who's got 35 pitches of the evening so far. Bryant's kidding it out towards right. It's well hit. It's carrying, and it's gone. Bryant leads the league now. Ten home runs for Shovel Bryant. A massive home run, 406 feet to right center field for Bryant. Puts... The Apollo's up to do nothing. Oh, I wish it was sponsored by Scoreutronic. That'd be great. That'll leave it down to Ken Griffey Jr. potentially here in the top of the third. Jay Green's going to have to bounce back from that home run. Out in front of plate. Jay Green gets it. Fires it over to first. Just gets the speedy Griffey Jr. going down the line. So Houston will score two. They score two runs on the two-run homer by Shovel Bryant, who now leads the league again in ten homers of the season. So a good day. Good day so far for Shovel Bryant. Ooh, excuse me. <coughs> Had a tickle in my throat all of a sudden there. Frankie Holly in the bottom of the order for the Downey Ducks coming up here in the bottom of the third. This silly widget keeps moving, and I don't know why. Hold on, guys. Let me just see if I can convince the game that it shouldn't be moving anymore. There. Can you just keep that there, please? There we go. All right. Let's see if that works. Frankie Holly up first here in the bottom of the third inning against Pedro Martinez. And she'll strike out on a four-pitch strikeout right about there. Another slider right there by, uh, <laughs> by Pedro Martinez. It's trying to run away. Yeah, obviously it is. Pete Wheeler up next. So the speedy bunter guy. Chance to be able to get on base here against Pedro. But Griffey will make the play. Griffey will make the play in center field, and Pete Wheeler has hired again for the second time this game. Lazy fly ball out there for Kennedy Jr., and that was an easy out. So that'll leave it up to Supernova here in the bottom of the third inning, batting 292 for the season. Two home runs, seven RBIs against Pedro Martinez. Strikes out on inside. Cherkel change up. Nicely done. Yeah, I am tech support, so I don't know what it's doing right now. I'm going to keep watching an eye on that thing. I think it happens in between innings. Or whenever maybe the Ducks come up to bat. I don't know why it's... <laughs> it seems like it's just trying to slip out of the screen every single half inning or so. Anywho, uh, we'll have Heffern and Green and Sexton here in the top of the fourth against Jay Green. Jay Green. Oh, wow. Oh, knocks it down but can't make the play as the second baseman, Evans, I believe. Uh, oh, no, it was Olafson. My apologies. Olafson made a nice attempt on that ground ball right there, but got it down, but couldn't get it over to the first baseman, and Heffernan will take first base on the ground ball. Oh, that's an infield single. Up next will be Sean Green against Jay Green. The matchup again here. Sean won this matchup in the uh, top of the second on a single to left, and this time he's going to probably ground into a double play. Nope, they'll get just the runner at second base as Heffernan goes in hard, Breaks out the double play chance, and they will only get the runner at second. So, Sean Green with a fielder's choice ends up at first base. Richie Sexton coming up next at this point. Jay Green would really love a double play right here. Oh, he strikes him out again. Eh, still a good result for Jay Green. Second strikeout for the uh, game for Sexton. And that'll leave it down. Leave it up to Wally Evans here. Second baseman for the Houston Apollos in the top of the fourth. Green still on first base. Evans grounds it over to the third baseman. Over to first they go. And that will retire the side. So we'll go to the bottom of the fourth. The Downey Ducks are still down to nothing. Pedro Martinez working here in the bottom of the fourth. 47 pitches. He'll have Giambi, Helton, and Larkin. So the heart of the order here for the Ducks. Giambi grounds it over to short. This is a deep in the hole for the shortstop. And a great job right there by Pickles. Ranging far to his right makes the makes the uh, step throw and gets Giambi by at least a step or two. So 
That arm of Pickles coming into play nicely right about there. Todd Helton coming up next. Only 2.03 for the season so far, but he has a hit today so far. But he'll strike out looking on a uh, beautiful fastball right about the knees right there by Martinez. His fifth strikeout of the game for Martinez. That'll leave it down to Barry Larkin for the top or the bottom of the fourth here. Pedro Martinez wheeling and dealing. Larkin will fly out to the left fielder. On comes the left fielder jogging and makes the grab. Levitt makes it look easy and that retires the side. Yeah, I can still see the ball curving too a little bit, which I, I know we're still looking at getting all of those removed. I wonder if partially it's because of the FOV slider I'm using, but I think there's also something else involved. I, I know we still have a couple of dev people looking into it, so we'll keep getting that fixed and making sure that those get removed because I think we got rid of like most of them, but I've seen most of the time if you, like, if you do foul balls for outs behind the plate, those hook a lot, and I don't know why. All right, Jay Green back on the mound here in the top of the fifth inning. Pedro Martinez in the top of the order for the Houston Apollos. Pedro strikes out on a one, two, three, <laughs> quick, quick at bat strikeout right there by Pedro. Uh, checking a swing on the slider, but he offered anyways. So, another strikeout for Jay Green, his fifth of the evening. Yeah, I can understand on foul balls. Like, those are going to be a little bit harder to do. Oh, nice single right there by the leadoff hitter. I think that's Pickles. That'll be a single as it falls right past the third baseman trying to uh, make that play right there. Nice try by Supernova. And that'll bring up Ian Levitt with a runner on first base. Pickles can run, if I remember correctly. Levitt will strike out on the slider. A beautiful pitch right there by uh, Jay Green. That's strikeout number six for the evening. And that'll leave it up. To the new home run leader, Shovel Bryant. Runner on first base again. Let's hope and pray he doesn't repeat. He'll line it down the line in left field. This is going to be extra bases. And with two people down, that means Pickles can run. Here comes the relay play back in. Pickles will go home. There's going to be no throw home as it's a stand-up. Nope, sliding triple for Shovel Bryant. So Bryant has the homer and the triple for the game. And the Apollo... Uh, the Apollos will take a 3-0 lead here in the top of the fifth. Jay Green at 63 pitches. Ken Griffey Jr. up to bat next. 352 batting average so far for the season. Let's see if he can get something else done here. It's going to be a single. It's 4-0 for the Apollos as, as Ken Griffey Jr. comes through with an RBI single to left. And it is now firmly an Apollos baseball game. This is what we expected from the Apollos offense. They have one of the best offenses in the game. They will just continue to wear you down. Heffernan up next, and she's going to fly it lazily out to the center fielder. Pete Wheeler ranges over to his right, makes the grab. So the Houston Apollos get two more runs on the RBI triple and RBI single by Shovel Bryant and Ken Griffey Jr., how to add the strike zone widget? Up here in the upper right-hand corner, you can show or hide the pitch location widget. And then you can just move it around if you want to. And that's what I end up doing, is I just basically show it, and then I move it around. So you can touch any of these buttons up here in the upper right-hand corner and show more information or less information. If you want to put stuff on your screen or off your screen, you can see exactly where the pitches were. Uh... <laughs> it only works for people named Alex. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. It's a, it's a trade secret. Trade secret. I don't know why I just gave up that trade secret. But yes, yes, yes. Uh, Martinez mows down Stan Olofsson here in the bottom of the fifth inning so far. Let me just make sure my audio is correct here, guys. Sorry about that. There we go. Pedro Martinez wheeling and dealing here in the bottom of the fifth. Ground ball up the middle, but right to the shortstop who had him played perfectly with the shift. And uh, that's another out right there. Jay Green, last person here potentially for the top or bottom of the fifth against Pedro Martinez. 72 pitches for Pedro. He's going to wheel and deal here to Jay Green. Jay's going to punch it over to right field, but the uh, second baseman's there to make the grab on that lazy little line drive. And that'll retire the side. So it's a one-hit shutout so far for Pedro Martinez through five. Jay Green's got some work to do as he, if he wants to keep this game within striking distance for his downy ducks. Sean Green up first here in the top of the six. He's going to go down swinging, and finally Jay Green wins that matchup. Nice changeup right there by Jay Green. Means strikeout number seven. Richie Sexton over two. Two strikeouts for the game so far. 
This one's hit out towards center. It's going to fall in for a single. No hat trick for Richie Sexton as he'll get on base here in the top of the sixth. That'll bring up Wally Evans, runner on first base. He's going to strike out swinging number eight, I believe, for the game for Jay Green. And that'll pull it around to Pedro Martinez, the bottom of the order for the Apollos. And he will strike out as well. So nine strikeouts for Jay Green on that 78 mile an hour changeup right below the knees. Beautiful pitch right there. We'll head to the bottom of the sixth. It is still 4 nothing. Houston Apollos. The Downey Ducks could use some offense right about now. They've got 76 pitches on uh, Pedro Martinez, but he's been masterful so far. One hit, no walks, six strikeouts. Lot of weak contact. As he will issue his first walk, speak of the devil. First walk of the game for Pedro Martinez, and it goes against the number nine hitter for the Downey Ducks, which means we're going to see Pete Wheeler up with a runner on first base. To the second baseman for one, back to the first baseman, but they won't get the speedy Pete Wheeler. Pete Wheeler has the feeler's choice that'll put him on first base. Chance to be able to get those we uh, those uh, those wheels in motion and get some stolen bases here. Heffernan, I don't remember what Heffernan's ability to catch is. Oh, she can't throw out anybody. Pete's definitely going to be running on these plays. Yep, there he goes. Off to second base he goes. And save. That's number eight for Pete Wheeler right about there. And let's see if he goes after third base. He could, he could go after third base. And he will. Here comes third base for Pete Wheeler. And he's safe again. Pete Wheeler, the speed demon on the base paths. Takes two stolen bases off of Pedro. Puts himself at third. And a 1-2 pitch to Supernova coming up from Pedro Martinez. A good opportunity here for the Downey Ducks to be able to score a run. This is out towards left. This should be a tag. Yep, here comes the tag. Here comes the throw. Nice play by the left fielder. But Pete Wheeler will score. Having to slide head first. So a good attempt right there by the left fielder Levitt. Made it close, which is something you just want to be able to say. Is that you made it close when Pete Wheeler tagged up against you. That's that's saying something <laughs> by itself. That'll leave it up to Jason Giambi to continue the inning. Two men down here in the bottom of the sixth. The shutout has been eliminated against Pedro Martinez. Giambi strikes out. And that'll be the inning. So we'll head to the top of the seventh. Four to one. Houston Apollos. Jay Green still in the pitch. 87 pitches so far. He'll have the top of the order here for the Houston Apollos. So they could respond. Pickles grounds it over to the shortstop. Larkin with the throw over. Makes it look easy. And that retires Pickles. Ian Levitt over three for the game so far. Let's see if he can get something started here for the Apollos. Over to the first baseman, Helton. He'll go to the bag. Second out of the inning. And that leaves it to Shovel Bryant. He is two for three for the day so far. A triple and a home run. And he strikes out swinging. Number 10 for Jay Green. And we'll hit the seventh inning stretch here. With the Apollos leading up the game against the Ducks here. Four to one. Nine hits against one so far. We'll see if uh, Pedro Martinez will continue to be pitching. He is at 92 pitches. Pedro Martinez will be up against Helton, Larkin, and Olafson. Helton flies it out towards center. In comes Ken Griffey Jr. Easily jogging in. Makes the grab. And that'll retire Todd Helton from his 0-2 pitch. Barry Larkin up next. 95 pitches now for Pedro Martinez. Larkin grounds it over to the third baseman. Bryant ranges to his left, fires over to first base, and they get they get Larkin by a couple couple steps at that point. Stan Olofsson at 100 pitches for Pedro Martinez is the last person potentially here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Olofsson getting his pitch from Pedro. And this is going to be shot into center field for a single. Olofsson dumps it into single for a sp uh, to center for a single against Pedro. And we'll have a runner on base for Luis, for uh, Linus Riverboat. 
All right, chance here for the Ducks to be able to get something started in front of Jay Green up next. River Boat's going to get hit. Oh, man, Pedro. Pedro has been uh, has been dominant, but he has let a couple pitches get away from him at this point, and that will be the end of the game for Pedro. His second, second hit batsman ends his night as Diana Hayes will come on to pitch with the tying run at home plate in the form of Jay Green. Big, big spot right here for Jay Green. Pitcher for the Ducks is also one of their best hitters. Yeah, the rubbers, unfortunately, the uh, the mounds are not exactly set up correctly. I do need to look at fixing those somehow. Something about the models, it doesn't register that they're actually, like, raised. So they put them, like, on the ground, ground, which is the field, the level playing field. So I gotta look, I gotta look at fixing those eventually. But anywho, Diana Hayes, 7.29 ERA for the season and 21 innings pitched, 17 runs given up. Runners on first and second here in the bottom of the seventh inning. The Ducks have an epic opportunity here. Green drives it. It's out to deep right center field, and we're tied. Jay Green does it for the Ducks, and we're tied four to four. A 447 foot blast to right center field. And the clutch hitting Jay Green has his third homer of the season, ties up his own pitcher's ball game, and leaves it up to the rest of his team to be able to get him a win now. Frankie Holly wants to keep this momentum going for the Downey Ducks here in the bottom of the seventh. Over to the second baseman. Second baseman fires over to first. And unfortunately, the Ducks are not going to be able to make anything more of the inning. They'll leave it up to Jay Green. Oh, this is going to be a fun one now. Jay Green, top of the eighth. He's at 99 pitches. He has to go against Griffey Jr., Heffernan, and Sean Green. And again, yes, the bullpen strike again. You just can't trust them. Jay Green working against Ken Griffey. Ken pops it up. A nice job right there by Jay Green to make that one look easy. Shortstop calls him off. Larkin makes the grab, and that retires Ken Griffey for the half inning. Heffernan, also a good hitter here. Up to bat against Jay. He, she plunks it out to left, and that'll be a single. That'll be a single for Heffernan, and that'll bring up Sean Green. Would you have walked Green to load the bases? I would have. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the one player on the Downey Ducks' team that could really scorch you, and... And, and 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 he did. I mean, why would you pitch to Jay Green at that moment? You would definitely be walking him. Give him the give. I mean, almost Barry Bonds treat Jay Green at that point. All right. Unfortunately, that is the end of the evening for Jay Green as Edward Olafson is going to come into pitch here in the top of the eighth inning against Sean Green and Richie Sexton. Sean Green up first. He's going to plunk it out towards left. It's another single. The Ducks are going to have problems here. They've got runners on first and second for the Apollos. And that brings up Richie Sexton. The 2020 Phillies or the BBL bullpens, which is worse? The Phillies. The Phillies. Yes. Like, I know some of these pitchers that we're going to be coming in for the rest of this game are bad. But we at least have good bullpen people down the road. You know, these are just the middle relief pitchers. The closers are good. It's just these middle relief pitchers who are not so good. But the Phillies... The Phillies are something else. Richie Sexton up here in the top of the eighth inning. Runners on first and second. One man down. A double play gets him out of the inning. Over to the shortstop. To second base. Back to first for the slow Richie Sexton. And the Apollos waste it. They waste an opportunity to be able to get the runner home on a single. And will go 4-4 four to four into the bottom of the eighth. Wow. This game is going to go the distance, I can tell already. Pete Wheeler up here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Diana Hayes is still pitching. Ah, oh, no theme song this time around. Oh, it's a nibbler in the middle of the diamond, and he's safe. Again, the speed of Pete Wheeler. Let's see if he can rinse and repeat the double steal attempt as well. Supernova up to bat, 288 for the season. 
My apologies if my voice is getting all uh, all distorted. I'm actually hitting red on my uh, on my OBS, but I'm very excited about this. Wheeler's got a chance to be able to take two more bases. Here's the first one. Not even a throw. Heffernan can't even get the ball out of her glove. And that's an instant stolen base. Let's see if he can do it again. 0-1. Oh, Here's the 1-1 pitch. And they pitched out. They're going to walk him. Oh, they walked Supernova. Boo indeed. So they intentionally walked Supernova to get the force on against Jason Giambi. Wow. Okay, that's um, that's an interesting decision. Let's see if it pays off here, guys. Jason Giambi up against at least his, uh, and there's the stolen base we were looking for. Again, not even a throw, as it was in the dirt and Heffernan dropped it. So technically, Wheeler has four, four stolen bases for the evening. He went from seven for eight to eleven for twelve in one ball game. Oh, man. The Ducks are in a great spot now. You could even take the double play to get Wheeler home. And you've got a full count pitch against Giambi, and he strikes out. Diana Hayes rears back and throws a 96-mile-an-hour fastball by Jason Giambi for the first out of the inning. And that'll leave it up to Todd Helton and potentially Barry Larkin to get something done here against Hayes. Helton up first. He puts it out to right field. This should be the leading run. Coming home is Pete Wheeler. Here comes the throw. He walks home and he's not even going to need a slide. It's now 5-4 Ducks. The Ducks have taken the lead in the bottom of the eighth inning. Pete Wheeler and his speed are definitely going to be player of the game at this point. Not even close from the throw from Sean Green, and the Ducks lead it. The Ducks lead it 5-4. We've had two green pitchers. The Ducks are green. Green couldn't make the play in right field. Way too much green. You're completely right, Rich. Just way too much green today. Barry Larkin up potentially for the last batter. And that's a stolen base attempt right there. And that's a caught stealing, though. Nicely done. Heffernan gets her revenge against the Ducks as she catches the, uh, who was that? Supernova? Yeah, Supernova trying to take second base and get into scoring position, and they nail the runner going to second base. So that'll leave it up to Luann Louie of the throw into right field. <laughs> in his own second base. Yeah, I don't know if I like the uh, looking at the catcher uh getting the throw, but we'll see about that. You know, maybe, maybe I'll switch that around. Luann Louie, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the best closers in the game. Even though her ERA is up to 3.09, she has seven saves for the season. Luann Louie can bring it. She throws 97 and 99 miles an hour. She will be up against Wally Evans, the pitcher's spot, and then Tommy Pickles. The Ducks are looking to keep the Houston Apollos from tying for first place in the league, and the Ducks would be looking at taking over a tie for a second, I believe, if they win this ball game. Evans up first here against Luann Louie. She wheels and deals, and Evans puts it on the ground towards the third baseman. Third baseman picks it up, fires it over, and that's the first out of the inning. Supernova able to make that play look easy right there. Matilda Sturges has come on to pinch hit for the Houston Apollos, down 4-5 to five here in the top of the ninth inning. Luann Louie wheeling and dealing. Strikes her out on a full count pitch right there. Beautiful changeup on the inside part of the plate. Locks up Sturges as she swings and misses. And it's down to Pickles. Tommy Pickles is the last chance for the Houston Apollos to not have a, I believe, a three-game losing streak at this point, which would take Houston clearly out of first place, and the Manatees would take first place solely. Luann Louie looking for save number eight here. Wheels and deals. And that's a strikeout! A comeback victory for the Downey Ducks as they take down the Houston Apollos 5-4. to four. 
a masterful performance from the offense of the Downey Ducks being clutch in the 6th, 7th, and 8th inning. And a great job by not only Jay Green, but also Pete Wheeler to make that game as interesting as that was, because that was epic. We had the homers by Jay Green and Shovel Bryant. Watching the player you created strike out to end the game. Uh, yeah, don't don't worry about that. I've, I've seen a few. I mean, it could be worse. I mean, it could be worse. Your submitted player could also be not performing very well as a starting pitcher like mine is. So, you know, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So a good day. A good day for both teams. No errors committed. Uh, Pickles had a two for five day. Bryant, two for five, triple in a home run. Ken Griffey Jr., two for four performance. Uh, you had hits scattered all around for the Apollos. The Ducks were clutch in the last half of the game. Good job by Pete Wheeler to get on base twice, steal four bases, score twice, and basically bring the Ducks back into contention, setting up the opportunity for Jay Green to mash the tying home run in the bottom of the seventh inning. And you can see this bar graph. The, the winning percent uh, possibility for this game was epic. You go all the way until the seventh inning, and the Ducks resurge to take down the Houston Apollos, making both teams go to 12-7. and seven. So our standings for the league look like this, ladies and gentlemen. Your Coral Springs Manatees are in sole possession of first place. Who would have expected that? I don't think anybody was expecting the Manatees to take first place by June. The Apollos... Captains, Ducks, and Kings are all tied for second place. We have a massive amount of teams up at the top, and a lot of teams are still 9 and 10 and 8 and 11, so nobody is faltering. I mean, besides maybe the Cluckers and the Warlocks. That might be the two teams that aren't doing so well. There are technically 34 games. In this season. So we are only about, what, a third of the way through? A little over? No, we're a little over halfway through, I think. 34, 17. Yeah, we just passed the halfway mark for the season. So we're a little over halfway at this point. And we'll go ahead and simulate all the way up to our next games. And let's see what happens. You think that the Whistlers would be better than the No More Pudge combo? Yeah, I would have to agree. I, th I think the Whistlers are definitely one of the teams that are a single ace-based team. Um, Abin Dutch is good, but, you know, if you look at the expanded standings, and I'll just mention this briefly, the one thing that sticks out to me is this number right here. The Whistlers are 0-5 in, in extra inning games. That is a bad sign. That means the Whistlers really should be... 13 and 6 if they had better bullpen and a little bit better, you know, clutch hitting. They really should be 13 and 6 or something close to like maybe 11 and 8. Um, but they have lost 5 games in extra innings. They are 2 and 7 in one run games. They have to win by a lot. Um Basically, they rely heavily on Abenduck to pitch them a shutout, which is not a good sign. Abenduck is good. You know, he's 5-1 and one with a 1.77 ERA, but he hasn't won. He's only won one of his last four starts. They're tanking to get a good draft pick for next season. I mean, they could be. They could be. But they did have the first pick. No, they didn't have first pick. Who did they have? Third pick. They had third pick overall. In our first season. So I don't know what they're doing at this point. Swatters are the best team in the game. Sure. Sure they are. I mean I like Tim Gross. Tim Gross is good. Khan has not done well. Computer nerd. He's done okay. He's the defensive shortstop. Um, you know Simon's done pretty well. Frazier's done pretty well. Uh, the Koalas were the first overall team. They picked Pablo Sanchez. But Pablo Sanchez... Actually, he has done pretty good his last two games. A double, three singles, two RBIs, but three strikeouts. So, 
He's batting 276, but he should be batting like 350. You wanted to see your um, your line really fast. I'll do one more before I get into this next game. Oh, good grief. So this is Tim Gross. So for the Tim Gross in our channel as well, this is what your stats line looks like right about now. And again, guys, I'll be exporting all these statistics at the end of the stream uh, as we are expected to do a two-hour stream here. So we have an hour left to be able to, to do some stuff. How's Alex Gonzalez doing? Well, there's a name I didn't expect to have questions about. Alex Gonzalez is betting. <laughs> okay, he, he's um, he's he's uh, he's he's. Let's just say he's doing okay. He's um, he's doing okay for being like one of the last picks in the draft. Let's just say. All right, moving on. Big game today, Manatees and the Kings. So let's get everyone else simulated first. Lowerman versus Bull Green. Durham Goats versus the Cluckers. And the winner of that game, the Goats. The Cluckers continue to fall. This is now the fourth loss in a row, I believe, for the Cluckers. Is that correct? Yes, they're on a four-game losing streak at this point. Wow. Wow. So unfortunately, homers to uh, Jason Kendall and Bobby Bull Green. But the uh, Kansas City Cluckers lose their game in the ninth inning to the Durham Goats, who move to 11 and 9. The Let's skip this game against the Manatees and the Kings. I want to do that one last. Uh, Louisville Swatters versus the Centennial Squirrels. That's Shooter McGavin versus Betty Houston. And the winner of that game is going to be the Louisville Swatters. 10 to 4. They take it over the Centennial Squirrels. A homer to the relief pitcher, Brad Radke. All right. All right, that's interesting. Anywho, uh, the Swatters move to 9-11, and 11, as do the Centennial Squirrels. So a lot of the bottom teams continue to move up. The Portland Pioneers versus the Lansing Robins. Both are 8-11 and 11 teams. This is Doc Holliday versus Pico de Gallo. And the winner is Pico de Gallo and the Lansing Robins as they take down the Portland Pioneers 5-1. Homer to Lundstrom, his second of the season. That's the second baseman for the... I think that was for Lansing. Yeah, for Lansing. So, bottom feeder team right about here. Let's see if uh, Pablo Sanchez can finally get something started at this point. Salem Warlocks versus the Kanata Koalas. Kenny Kawaguchi versus Kurt Schilling. And Pablo Sanchez comes through an 8-4 to four butt whooping for the uh, Kanata Koalas over the Salem Warlocks. Homer number 7. For Pablo Sanchez, Captain Tennille hits his fourth of the season. And uh, a good performance from the, I guess, from the pitching staff for the Koalas, finally. Did uh, Pablo was three for five for the game. Three RBIs. Nicely done by Pablo. Finally coming through when needed most by his Koalas as they move to nine and 11. And stave off potentially going down into the really bad part of our standing. So that's a good one for them right about there. All right. Marmots versus the Mythics. This is for 500. Whoever wants to get it can take it. Delgado versus Marcotte. And the winner is the Murfreesboro Marmots as they win 1-0 over the Bismarck Mythics. It took until the seventh inning to get a run as both pitchers were in a pitcher's duel. But Delgado and the Marmots eke out the victory over the Bismarck Mythics, dropping the Mythics to 9-11. and 11. And the Murphy Bros. Marmots go to 10-10. and 10. They may be our only 10-10 and 10 team at this point. All right. Whistlers versus the Apollos. The Whistlers could really use a win right about now against the reeling Apollos. Maria Luna versus Evan Screwball. And they get it. The Whistlers keep the Apollos... On their just on their trek down to the bottom of the standings as the Apollos fall three to seven. Homers to Petrovich, Ivan Rodriguez, Tony Gwynn Sr. Heffernan hits her seventh of the season, but Maria Luna has a picture perfect outing. And the Whistlers move to nine and eleven, taking the Apollos down to twelve and eight. Wow. So the Mythics are failing, the Apollos are failing, the Squirrels are failing, 
and the cluckers are all failing. So all the all the people in in the uh, all the people rooting for people in the chat, uh, all the chat favorites are falling apart. Let's see if my pitcher can fall apart or not here. The Downey Ducks, 12 and 7 on the road against the Toronto Giants at home. Nancy Chin versus yours, yours truly. And the winner is going to be Oof. <laughs> We're just um uh, We're just going to pretend that game didn't happen, guys. That the um, that that game didn't happen. No. What game? Virginia Beach Captains versus the Queens Nobles, 12 and 7 versus 10 and 9. Uh, Wasarsis versus Ed Barker. <laughs> Thank you, Yordle. I could use some love right about now. I don't even know if that's me giving up 11 runs in the sixth inning. Like, oh my goodness. I don't even, I'm not even going to look at that. My ERA didn't go up that much. So I don't think that was me. I mean, I might, I probably gave up like six runs, but... I don't think that was all me. I think that was somebody else. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, I don't want to look at it. <laughs> okay, fine. We'll look at it. I gave up seven. All right. Uma Morris gave up six. The relievers gave up 11 runs. All right. So I gave up seven. So I started the sixth inning. All right. You guys happy now? <laughs> Yeah, lucky number seven. That's about what I do on a bad day. So, yeah, not a good day for the Giants, unfortunately. The pitching staff couldn't hold it together. Um, not getting a lot of support from our offense, so ouch. Uh, if you want to move the widgets, you need to be able to not have them automatically sorted. If you go to your view options, it should... Uh, I'll demonstrate that in a second here before we get started on another game here. But you do need to make sure they're not automatically adjusted, which is one of those two options in the upper right-hand corner. Um, if those are turned on to be automatically, you know, adjusted to the screen, otherwise you can't move them. All right, captains versus the nobles. We're looking for the nobles to keep going on their winning ways. Both of these two teams are very hot, by the way, actually. I believe the captains are on, like, a three-game winning streak. No, they lost their last game. I apologize. But they're 7-3 and three in their last 10 games. The nobles are 7-3 and three in their last 10 games. So let's see what happens here. The Nobles will win it. Congratulations to the Queen's Nobles as Khan has his ninth save of the season, dropping his ERA down to 1.35. And the Captains will go down to 12 and 8. The Nobles will be 11 and 9 as as uh, Floyd hits his seventh homer of the season for the Captains. I'm surprised that uh, Mikey Thomas hasn't been getting as many hits or home runs. He had seven. He got off to a good start, but he has cooled down extensively. And there's the booze. All right, so the big game of the day is the Manatees versus the... Who was it again? This is against the Kings, right? Yes. Manatees versus the Kings. This is for sole possession of first place, or we'll be looking at a major tie, I believe. We'd have a three-way tie in first place. The, the Ducks, Manatees, and Kings would all be tied for first place. It's Ramona Bennett versus Tim Hudson. Advantage to the Kings. Let's see if they win. And they do! The Manatees are shut out. Five or six, nothing. By the Memphis Kings and Tim Hudson. Tim Hudson might be the best number two pitcher in our league, guys. Like, he might be the best one. Absolutely might be the best one. So a good performance by the Memphis Kings means that moving into, jo uh, into uh, June 10th, we have a three-way tie once again for first place. Two people are in second place. That's the Captains and the Apollos. The Apollos are on a three-game losing streak. They're three and seven in their past ten games. The Queen's Nobles are on an eight and two run. As they are looking at the top, top part of the list and eyeing it very aggressively. The Giants, unfortunately, are 8-12 and 12 with the Pioneers. The Whistlers, Swatters, Koalas, Robins, Cluckers, Mythics, and Squirrels are all 9-11. and 11. The Murfreesboro Marmots are the only team at 500 exactly at 10-10 and 10, as we have hit the 20 game mark for our season. Excuse me. By the way, some of the just news and information for people at this point. Hoffman had a great month. Bosworth had a great month. 
And now Tony Gwynn Sr. had a good month or week. I don't remember. That's a player of the week. My apologies. All right. June 10th, we're going to be seeing the Cluckers versus the Manatees. Robins at the Goats. Whistlers are at the Downy Ducks. Oh, my gosh. We have the Avon Duck versus Jay Green matchup. Oh, I want to watch that game, but we do not have time today. The Giants are going to be at the Virginia Beach Captains. The Apollos are at the Pioneers. Kings are going to be over at the Warlocks. Oh, boy. That's a rough game right about there. Squirrels are going to be taking on the Marmots. The Queen Nobles are going to be up against the Louisville Swatters. And the Mythics are at the Koalas. Let's get it started. Cluckers versus the Manatees. This is Todd Xavier versus Randy Johnson. And Randy Johnson comes through. A 2-1 victory for the Manatees as they move to 14-7. and seven. Puts them in possession of first place for the time being at the moment, as that was a really tight 2-1 to one victory. Randy Johnson and Dontra Willis again combining for a great performance. Todd Xavier had a really good outing, but just gave up the extra run, and the Cluckers moved to 9-12. and 12. The Robins and Goats, 9-11 and 11 versus 11-9. and 9. Tipton versus Angela Del Vecchio, and the winner is going to be Angela Del Vecchio and the Durham Goats. Jay Mills hits his eighth homer of the season. Debbie Nagasawa, though, backs up the Goats with two home runs, her fifth and sixth of the season, as they win 6-2. to two, 14 hits against the Lansing Robins. And the big one. But let's save this one for last. The, Go uh, the Giants versus the Captains. This is Percy Pounder versus Earl Abbott. The Giants could really use this win right about here, and they will not get it. 9-1, to one, the Virginia Beach captains roll over the Giants as the Giants now move to 8-13. and 13. The Virginia Beach captains are now 13-8. and eight. A good outing right there by Earl Abbott going 8 and a thirds inning, 15 strikeouts, one hit given up, and one earned run given up. Maybe I could get one start on 85 pitch count? <laughs> That looks like I done. I didn't pitch the last four games. Um, are you a relief pitcher by any chance, T Rex? I know some starters who got submitted as starters are being slotted as relief pitchers or even long relief pitchers because there are too many starters in the league. So um, there's a chance I might review after this month. I might review some of the number two starters and swap them out. Uh, most of the number two starters are actually pretty well set. So if you're a relief pitcher you're going to be a good relief pitcher at that point, which we, we need more relief pitchers, guys. Like, we actually do need good relief pitchers. Like, if you're doing a good job as a relief pitcher, please, 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 please be that for us because a lot of teams give up a lot of their runs in the, uh, you know, later stages of a ball game right now. Pedro Martinez versus Cody Hamilton. This is the Apollos versus the Pioneers. This should be an easy win for the Apollo. I wasn't expecting the walk-off by the Portland Pioneers. Pedro Martinez has a great game. Pedro does well, but the Portland Pioneers upset the Houston Apollos. The Apollos are in a free fall. Absolute free fall for the Houston Apollos. 4-3. to three. They lose the ball game. Bryant has his 11th homer of the season. And the Portland Pioneers move to 9 and 12 as the Apollos move to 12 and 9. Yes, I'm asking for relief pitcher submissions for next season. If you've already submitted a player, unfortunately, you can't submit another one. Um, but I'll look at being able to allow people to do reworks for the next season. So we'll see about that. But uh, yeah, we definitely could use maybe probably 30, 30 relief pitchers. Uh, which would give us the option to have some people play more double duty. Two-way players would be allowed to actually do two-waying, which would be better. So we'll see about that. I'll see. I'll, I'll look into that. So we'll see what happens. I may look at some, some changes. We may look at some changes to other settings or something. We'll, we'll figure it out. All right. Kings versus the Warlocks. Let's see if Leo Wayne can, or let's see if Hellerman can actually upset the Memphis Kings at home for the Warlocks. And they don't. The Memphis Kings come back to win it 6-5 to five after scoring the leading run in the ninth inning. Mo Vaughn has his third homer of the season for the Warlocks, but they will lose and move to 6-15. and 15. 
The Warlocks. My apologies to any Warlock fans in the uh, in the chat, but uh, your team not doing very good. Let's just let's just be honest. Your team not doing very good. The Memphis Kings move to 14 and seven, which puts them in a tie for first place with the Coral Springs Manatees. Let's continue on at this point. Centennial Squirrels versus the Murfreesboro Marmots. This is going to be Christina Beatty versus Greg Maddox. And that's a victory by Greg Maddox over the Centennial Squirrels. Beatty has a rare, not a rare loss, but her ERA is being so low, I'm surprised she loses. But the Marmots win 4-1. Wow. Nicely done right there by the Marmots to take the victory over the Squirrels. 11 and 10 go the Marmots. 9 and 12 go the Squirrels. Homers to Simon Peter and Ricky Johnson. The Queens Nobles versus the Louisville Swatters. 11 and 9 Nobles versus the 9 and 11 Swatters. This is going to be Bosworth versus Angelique Harding. And the Queens Nobles take it in the 8th and 9th inning. Homers for Uchida and Triangle for the Queens Nobles as they move to 12 and 9. Save number 10 for Amir Khan. And the chat hates it. <laughs> oh man, the booze come out for the Queens, but the Queens Nobles are 12 and 9, taking down the Swatters as they go to 9 and 12. Lastly, before our big game of the day, we're going to be seeing the Bismarck Mythics versus the Kanata Koalas. Both teams are 9 and 11. This is Tetcher versus Villegas. And in the end, the Kanata Koalas behind Alex Rodriguez will take the victory over the Bismarck Mythics. Oh my gosh. A Rod has a night to remember. Two home runs, his third and fourth of the season as they score all of their runs in the first inning. So Tetcher has a bad first inning. So that's two home runs in the same inning for Alex Rodriguez. Okay, this I got to see. So a single for Connolly. A walk. Oh, no, bunt for hit. A single. And then a walk to Pablo Sanchez. A walk to Captain Tennille. Frank Thomas strikes out looking. Wait, where are the two home runs for... Wait, 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 wait. I'm looking at the wrong game. Am I looking at the wrong game? Hold on. Bismarck's versus Mythics. Where is... Wait. Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. A-Rod hit it for the Mythics. I am just... I'm just dumb. Um, yes, not the same inning. But all five runs scored in the first inning for the Koalas. A-Rod hits two home runs over the course of the game for the Mythics. My apologies, guys. I thought I thought it was um I thought A-Rod was part of the Koalas. Which I was all up I was gonna be like, wow, how did he hit two homers in the same inning? That would take like a miracle. So yes, A-Rod hits two homers over the course of the game, probably in the first inning and the seventh, I'm going to assume. And, um, unfortunately, the two homers for A-Rod don't actually make Tetcher a winner. So, my apologies. A-Rod is a Bismarck Mythic. So, even with the performance of A-Rod hitting two homers for the Mythics and a valiant effort by Tetcher outside of the first inning, um, the Kanata Koalas do take this game 5-4 to four over the Mythics. My apologies about that, guys. I didn't realize what I was looking at. Uh, where do I submit a player for the next season? You can submit a player uh, via the Discord. Let me grab you that link really fast. The Mythics are on a slide. Yes, they are. They are definitely on a slide at this point. All right, let me make sure I can get the link. Where did I put that link? Oh, fiddlesticks. Where is my link? I know I had it here someplace. Da, 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 da. Oh, where's my link? All right, hold on. I got to go back to the announcements so fast. My apologies about the delays here, guys. But if you do want to submit a player, I should have you guys be able to do that. So let me at least grab where that link is. There it is. Copy the link. 
This is the link you can go to to be able to submit your own players. So if you have not submitted a player yet, you may go there and do that now. All right, so unfortunately, Tetcher and the Mythics drop again. So let's see who wins out of the Windsor Whistlers and the Downy Ducks. This is going to be a fun one right here. Abin Duck versus Jay Green. Let's see who wins. Definitely not going to miss it this time. Absolutely. Please don't miss that. And the winner is going to be actually the Windsor Whistlers as they come back in the 11th inning. So the Whistlers flip the tables on their extra inning terrible performances as they beat the Downy Ducks in extra innings and in a one-run game. 4-3 to three as they defeat Luann Louie. Wow. So Abenduck does not get the win, but he does have a good performance, and the Downey Ducks fall to 13-8 and eight after having a wonderful comeback victory against the uh, Apollos. They unfortunately will fall. Oh, the Whistlers move to 10-11. and 11. So moving into the 14th of June. This is our standings, ladies and gentlemen. The Kings and Manatees have first place. So the Ducks and Apollos, the two teams that were leading for most of the season, are now not in first place. The Warlocks are still dead last. The Giants are second, second last. And then we have a lot of teams at 9 and 12, a couple of them at 10 and 11, one team at 11 and 10, a couple teams at 12 and 9, which includes the resurging Queen's Nobles. So an interesting development right there for the Queen's Nobles. And then we have a two-way tie for first and second. The Captains and Ducks, Manatees, and Kings. So we'll see what happens in this next game. This is going to be the number two stars going at it now. Just really fast, let's take a look at the leaderboards really quickly here. Ah. As we're at an hour and 30 minutes, we got 30 minutes left, guys, before we're going to be ending this stream. Go Fannin for the Memphis Kings leads the batting average title right now at 384. Stephanie Morgan right behind him at 381. Tuck Eddie right behind Stephanie at 378. Shovel Bryant does have the lead in home runs at 11. Ken Griffey Jr. right behind him with nine, and Luke Gofanin at eight. Bryant also leads the league. Uh, he's tied technically with Ken Griffey Jr. for RBIs at 27. Pete Wheeler now owns the league in stolen bases. He takes that from Shlobotnik with uh, 14 stolen bases. Tuck Eddy with 13. Chris Jacob at 12. For War, it's Ken. Ken Griffey Jr. has a 1.9 War. He has had a phenomenal season so far. Um, I would say that Jay Mills has also done very well. Cade Munson doing very well so far. Um, hitting streaks, we had Stephanie Morgan with a 19-game hitting streak. That got snapped, unfortunately. So we have our new leader for the hitting streak at 19. But we'll see if somebody else can come back and get something higher than 19. For ERA, Christina Beatty actually owns the ERA title right now at a 182. Benjamin Avenduct has a 194. And Eric Gagne, the closer for the Bismarck Mythics, has a 196. The most amount of wins right now goes to Jay Green at 8. Pedro Martinez is close behind him with 7. And then Ramona Bennett from the... What is that? That's the uh, CRS. That's the... That's not Coral... Is that Coral Springs? I think it is. No, yeah, it is. So the Coral Spring Manatees have a pitcher on the list as well. Ramona Bennett, 6 wins. Wow. Strikeouts right now goes, of course, to Benjamin Abenduct at 144. Villegas has 131. Pedro has 124. Abenduct has the best war at the moment at 4.7. Hellerman is right behind him at 3.3. Pedro Martinez right behind her at 3.0. And, of course, Amir Khan, 10 saves. Dontrell Willis has got 9. Luan Louis has got 8. All right. Back to the scores really fast. We're going to be seeing the Koalas versus the Squirrels, Swatters versus the Giants, Kings are going to be at the Mythics, the Goats are at the Apollos, Manatees are going to be at the Robins, Warlocks at the Cluckers, Ducks versus the Captains, Portland Pioneers versus the Windsor Whistlers, and the Marmots are going to be at the Nobles. So we'll see what happens with all these games right really fast. Ooh. Too much talking, not enough drinking water. Kurt Schilling versus Betty Houston for the Koalas versus the Squirrels. And 
The Squirrels will take it 9 to 3, bringing both of the records to 10 and 12. Good performance from B, uh, from Betty Houston. Frank Thomas has a good performance, but Calican Jr. and a good performance from the Squirrels offense to be able to bring themselves out of the losing streak, I believe, at this point, and at least at least to a 10 and 12 record. So we'll see if other teams can match that at this point. We have the Swatters at the Giants. This is Shooter McGavin versus yours truly. Oh, another bad performance from my pitcher. The Giants lose it 5-7. to seven. Homers for Gloss, Phillips, and Peavy. But the Giants will move to 8-14. and 14. Oh, man. Just those first two innings just destroying any chance the Giants have of being able to win this ball game as they fall to 8-14. and 14. Swatters go to 10-12. and 12. The Kings versus the Mythics. This is Tim Hudson, potentially the best number two pitcher in our, in our league right now versus Brenda Marcat for the Mythics. And the Memphis Kings will lose it. They lose the game 3-2 in extra innings. Derek Jeter hit a homer his third of the season. Bismarck had homers to Ky uh, Kevin Lewis. Yeah, Kevin Lewis and David Van Hute, his first of the season. That's Lewis's eighth. Eighth homer of the season as the Bismarck Mythics make a surprise victory over the Memphis Kings. 3-2. to two. So the Bismarck Mythics take down the Memphis Kings. Kings go to 14-8. and eight. Bismarck Mythics go to 10-12. and 12. Let's move on to the Goats versus the Apollos. Both of these teams are 12-9. and nine. This is TJ Lowerman versus Evan Screwball. And the Apollos look dominant in a 4-1 uh, defeat or uh, win, victory, over the Durham Goats. Good job by Houston right there. Heffernan hits her eighth homer of the season. Wally Evans hits his first. The Goats move to 12 and 10. The Apollos move to 13 and 9. The Manatees versus the Robins. This is Ramona Bennett versus Pico de Gallo. And the Coral Spring Manatees win this game as well, 8 to 5. So they move to 15 and 7. Homers, tw two, two homers to two different people. Chico Pappas has his fifth and sixth homer of the season. Meisenheimer has his sixth and seventh homer of the season. Gary Allen has his third. Beltron and Chipper Jones have their sixth and fifth homers, respectfully, of the season. But the Coral Spring Manatees, again, move to 15-7. and seven. Lansing Robbins move to 9-13. and 13. The Warlocks versus the Cluckers. This is Kenny Kawaguchi versus Bobby Bullgreen. And the winner of that one is going to be Bobby Bullgreen and the Cluckers as they take a 6-3 victory over the Salem Warlocks. So the Warlocks are now 10 games behind 500, which means I don't think they have an opportunity to get back to 500 at this point. I think they're actually beyond saving almost. Um, good job by Zenon Estrada for Salem, though. Two home runs, his fourth and fifth of the season. But Jim Tomey, I believe that might have been a three-run homer. And um, the Kansas City Cluckers go to 10 and, 10 and 12 for the season. So a good job right there. Here comes Linus. <laughs> the captains, home against the Ducks. Both teams are 13 and 8. A big matchup right about here. This is for a tie of second place, I believe. And then the loser gets to go down into, I believe, fourth place. Nancy Chin versus Jessica Wasarsis. And the winner is going to be the Ducks. A good performance by Jay Green, Pete Wheeler, and the offense of the Ducks to come back and win it after breaking the tie in the ninth inning. Wow. Greg Peters has his seventh homer for the Virginia Beach captains. But the Ducks will move to 14-8, and eight, knocking the captains down to 13-9. and nine. Did Pete Wheeler have any stolen bases on the game? No, there were no stolen bases whatsoever. Interesting. All right. Pioneers are going to be at the Windsor Whistlers. This is uh, Doc Holliday versus Maria Luna. Chance here for the Portland Pioneers? No, it's not, as the Whistler, Windsor Whistlers will win 7-5, moving to 500 at 11-11. 11 and 11. The Portland Pioneers will move to 9-13 and 13 as they lose the game 5-7. Uh, Homer is only going to Conine over the course of that game. Too much time I was rusty. <laughs> of course you were, of course. All right, Marmots 
at the Nobles. Last game of the day at this point. The Marmots are 11 and 10. Nobles are 12 and 9. They are 9 and 1 at home. So when the Queen's Nobles are at home, they almost always win. Do they win this game? Yes, they do. It took them until the 8th and 7th innings. But they get homers from Uchida and Triangle again. I think I've just seen that same result like a couple days ago. But the Nobles will move to 13-9, and nine, knocking the Marmots back to 500 at 11-11. and 11. Barker gets the win. Delgado gets the loss. The Nobles, the Queen's Nobles just continue to impress me. Like, I did not expect the Nobles to be vying for, you know, at the least a playoff spot, if not first place. You know, they are two games back. Uh, they're a game back of second place from the Kings and Ducks. The Manatees are looking really solid. But the Queen's Nobles are 8-10 and 10 in their last 10 games, right on pace with the Kings and Manatees. The Warlocks, the Warlocks are 1-9. and nine. The Giants are 3-7. and ten, uh, three and seven. The Cluckers are 3-7. and seven. So both of those teams are failing. But, um, man, those Queen's Nobles are doing a really good job. All right. Let's get through a couple more games, and then we will call the stream at that point. We're looking today at the Robins at the Warlocks. Nobles are facing the Koalas. Cluckers at the Mythics. Captains against the Swatters. So no big games out of any of those guys so far. I think we're going to see some bigger games later in the day. Squirrels versus the Kings. That's a pretty good one about there. Windsor Whistler is against the Durham Goats. That's going to be a big matchup. Abenduct versus Del Vecchio. And then the bigger ones for the evening. The Giants... At the Marmots, that's going to be Maddox versus Pounder. Apollos at the Manatees. Martinez versus Randy Johnson. Ooh. That's tempting to watch. Pioneers are going to be at the Ducks. That's Hamilton versus Jay Green. Let's get the rest of the games done first. I'll think about that one game. I don't think we have time. But that's going to be a big matchup regardless. All right. Robins at the Warlocks. Warlocks have a good chance to win this game, and they will. A win for the Warlocks, finally, as they take down the Lansing Robins. And look who's the number three performer of the day. <laughs> look at that. Alex Gonzalez. Your number three performer of the day behind, of course, both starting pitchers as the Warlocks take the victory over the Robins. 4-1, to one, moving to 7-16. Seven 7-16. and, 16. Seven and 16. That is... Not that good, but the Robins have not been doing good either. So, you know what? That's fine. The Queen's Nobles are going to be on the road against the Kanata Koalas. Good chance here for Pablo Sanchez to be able to put a good performance forward as he has Tiffany Bodworth up against Juan Villegas. And Mikey Thomas hits a homer, but the Nobles will lose 5-2. to two. Villegas has a solid performance for the Kanata Koalas as they move to 11-12 and 12 and take down the resurging Queens Nobles as they win 5-2. Homers again to Mikey Thomas, his eighth of the season. Veronica Lee has her fourth, but the uh, that's going to be a hard one to get away for the, uh, for the Nobles. Go whoever plays against the Nobles. <laughs> All right, our 10-12 and, two, uh, 10 and 12 teams... Cluckers and the Mythics. This is Todd Xavier versus Ryan Tetcher. And that, that's the Ryan Tetcher I'm used to seeing. Seven innings, one hit, four walks, 12 strikeouts, and a one nothing victory for the Bismarck Mythics over the Kansas City Cluckers. Gagne gets his fifth save, fifth save of the season, drops his ERA down to 161, and the Mythics finally have a good... Good performance and a good outing right there to result in a win. The Captains versus the Swatters at this point. Earl Abbott versus Angelique Harding. And the Captains lose. The Swatters behind Troy Gloss have taken a game from the Captains. 5-2. to two. I want to see... Oh, man. Gross goes 0-3 for 3 with a walk. But um, a good performance from the rest of the offense from the Swatters. Vladdy Guerrero went four for four for the day. But um, a good job right there by the Swatters to propel themselves to a 5-2 to two victory over the Captains. The Captains are now 13-10. and 10. They used to be a really top-tier team, and they're kind of falling off the, off the plate a little bit at this point. So we'll have to see if they can come back. 
Squirrels versus the Kings. This is Christina Beatty versus Leah Wayne. This is the number one ERA pitcher in the league for the Squirrels. Let's see if they can keep it up against the Memphis Kings. And they can, technically. Not a good performance for Beatty, but uh, her team wins 7-5 to five as they take down the Memphis Kings, who now are 14-9 and nine as the Squirrels go to 11-12. and 12. Homers to Gofanen, his ninth, and uh, Florence Felgate, her first of the season. So an impressive win right there for Centennial. The Swatters are getting hot. They're going to make a run. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, the Whistlers versus the Goats. This is Abenduck versus Del Vecchio. Let's see if Abenduck can keep that ERA low. And he does as they get a 4-1 to victory over the Goats. Good performances from both of the uh, pitchers there, to be honest. Um, a good save for Glass right there as well. Homers to Petrovic, his fifth of the season. As the Windsor Whistlers tie up the Goats at a 12-11 and record. So a good job right there by both people. And we'll have to see if that means the Whistlers can make a playoff run. If they can start to get some more wins behind Abenduck, they would be a very serious contender. Um, the Goats, or no, sorry, not the Goats. The Giants versus the Marmots. Chance here for the Giants to go on the road. The Marmots are very good at home, though. Greg Maddox on the mound versus Percy Pounder. And the Giants win it in extra innings. A 4-3 to three victory for the Toronto Giants. Very, very nice. A good... A good victory right there by the Toronto Giants as they move to 9-14. and 14. Mm. Excuse me. The Murphy Bureau Marmots are now 11-12. and 12. Uh, Maddox had a good performance, but homers to Uma Morris, Delgado, and uh, Nevin for the Murphy Bureau Marmots. And the one air for the Marmots, I don't know if that was an unearned run in the 10th or, or what that would be at this point, but uh, the Giants... They need extra innings, but they do top the Marmots 4-3. to three. So the Marmots are not going to be going up for upwards in the standings today. All right. Let's do the last one before we get to our big game of the day. Cody Hamilton versus Jay Green. This is the Portland Pioneers 9-13 versus the Downey Ducks at 14-8. The Ducks are 9-2 at home, by the way. Make that 10-2 at home as the Downey Ducks dominate the Portland Pioneers behind Jay Green. Jay Green did not go the complete game as Luann Louie got her 10th save of the season, but Green gets his 9th win of the season, propelling him forward on that win column as they take down Portland 2-0. So the Ducks are now 15-8, and and the Portland Pioneers are 9-14. and All right, the big one. Pedro Martinez versus Randy Johnson. Houston Apollos at the Coral Springs Manatees. The Manatees are 9-2 and two at home. The Apollos are 4-6 and six on the road. Huge advantage to the Manatees. And in the end, the Manatees lose in extra innings. Dontrell Willis blows the save and records the loss. As the Coral Springs Manatees had a 2-0 lead going into the top of the ninth inning, and the Houston Apollos resurge and come back to win 4-2. to Taking down the first place, Coral Springs Manatees. Uh, we now have a couple more ties to talk about. The Manatees and Ducks are 15-8. Uh, and eight. The Kings and Apollos are 14-9. and nine, And the Nobles and Captains are 13-10. and 10. So... We're just going to keep going with the upsets, guys, because this is going to be fun all the way through the end of this season. All right. Yay, we have people creating players. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. All right, I'm going to speed up a little bit because this is the number two pitcher, so let's just go ahead and auto-play all the games at this point. Warlocks are at the Apollos, so that's going to be a win probably for the Apollos. Ooh, the Manatees play against the Whistlers. Goats are going to be at the Pioneers. Marmots are at the Virginia Beach Captains. So that should be a game for the Captains to win right about there. Koalas are going up against me and the Giants. Mythics are going to be at the Robins. Very nice. Cluckers are going to be at the Squirrels. Okay. Ducks are going to be at the Swatters. All right. Ducks should be able to do a good job right there. But let's see if the Swatters can keep it going. And then Kings versus the Nobles. All right. So that'll be our big game of the evening is going to be that last one. Let's see what happens 
Right off the bat, the Warlocks can do absolutely nothing against the Houston Apollos. The 12th home run of the season for Shovel Bryant. He still leads the league with 12 as the Apollos win 8-3. to The Whistlers win 7-5 to over the Coral Springs Manatees. So that's another game against the Manatees taken down. So we have a tie across the board for first place so far. Uh, Chico Pappas had his 7th homer of the season. Maria Luna won her 4th game. The Goats managed to come back against the Pioneers, and they won 7-6. to six. The Ducks have definitely been one of the most consistent teams. Yes, I definitely agree on that. Behind Jay Green and their offense, they are very good. The Virginia Beach Captains won 13-3 to three over the Marmots. Wow. A solid performance from the offense of the Virginia Beach Captains with uh, Vladdy hitting his seventh homer of the season, Peters his eighth. Um... The Toronto Giants lost to the Koalas, 7-4. Not a good outing from yours truly again, unfortunately. That's just unfortunately going to be the case. Burnett's hit a homer for the Koalas. Phillips and Delgado hit homers for the Giants. The Mythics did win their game 6-0. A good job by Brenda Marcotte, Marcart against Pico de Gallo. That was a 6-0 shutout. For the Mythics right there as they move to 12 and 12. So they're 500 alongside the Koalas at this point. So both of the pinkish purplish teams are doing a good job at this point. The Robins fall to 9 and 5 as do the Toronto Giants. Kansas City beats the Centennial Squirrels 6 to 5. A good job by uh, Centennial in their offense. But they cannot pull out the victory as, they, uh, as both teams move to 11 and 13. Ripken Jr. had his thirteenth, his third homer of the season. Fabic had his sixth, and Bluer had her third. The Downey Ducks lost. That's the big upset so far, ladies and gentlemen. The Downey Ducks lost their game. They're now fifteen and nine as they lose three to two after giving up the go-ahead run in the seventh inning. They had homers by Todd Helton and Jay Green, but they could not. Squeak by with the victory over the Louisville Swatters as the Swat Swat Swatters take it to the Downey Ducks. And then the last game of the day, unfortunately, the Queens had nothing to be able to say against Tim Hudson and the Memphis Kings as the only thing they could muster was a solo home run by Mikey Thomas. And Memphis Kings go to 15-9. and nine. So we have, what now, three? No, we have four teams. Four-way tie. For first place, heading into the next game of the season, which is going to be June 24th. We're back to the number one starters. The Kings, Apollos, Manatees, and Ducks, the four best teams in the league. We have one worst team, which is going to be Salem, of course. Three teams tied at 9 and 15, so we do have our bottom feeders. The Marmots, Cluckers, and Squirrels are all 11 and 13. We have three teams at 12 and 12. As Tony Gwynn has taken the batting average title right now, 404. Wow. That's actually impressive. Tuck Eddy has the stolen base lead at 15. Jay Green has nine wins. Yeah, if you want to change the name, I can absolutely change the name. Eric Gagne has the ERA lead now at 161. Uh, Abenduct has the strikeout lead right now, 154. Saves are still going to Khan, but Louie right up there with him. 10 saves for both of them. So moving into, we'll try to get through all of June here, guys, and then we'll call it. So today's games, Tetcher versus Martinez. That's a big one right about there. Abenduck versus Hellerman. Maddox versus Harding, Del Vecchio versus Jay Green, Villegas versus Abbott. So some big matchups right off the bat. Ducks and Goats, Captains and Koalas, Apollos and Mythics. So a couple of the 12 and 12 teams going up against some of the better teams. They have to win these games right here. So let's start at the top. Apollos, Mythics. Oh, it took extra innings. Both pitchers managed to go seven innings of scoreless baseball, but a home run by Tommy Pickles in the top of the 11th inning lets the Houston Apollos take the victory over the Bismarck Mythics. Oh, that's going to hurt right there. That one's going to hurt a lot. Swatters at the Marmots. This is uh, 
Harding versus Maddox. And in the end, oof. Oof, indeed. The Swatters coming from behind. As they were down 3-1, to one, score six runs in the top of the fifth, and then hold on to the victory in the bottom of the ninth. Homers to Ahmed Khan and Gross. Tim Gross hits his fifth homer of the season. Marked and Nevin hit homers for the Marmots. And the Marmots go to 11 and 14. Swatters are now 13 and 12. And they're, they're a surging, if I remember correctly, at this point. They're on a four game winning streak. So the Whistlers and the Swatters coming around to get some better re uh, records at this point. So we'll have to see what happens about all that. Yep, Khan gets third player of the day so far. Um, goats at the Ducks. Here's the big one. Can Jay Green keep it together? He cannot. Angela Del Vecchio has an eight and a third inning shutout. Shared shutout with her, um, her relief pitcher. But 16 strikeouts for Angela Del Vecchio as the Downey Ducks fall to the Durham Goats. For nothing. That's a big upset right about there. That shouldn't have happened. Jay Green has his second loss of the season. Wow. All right. The Whistlers look to keep their winning streak alive against the Salem Warlocks. This is Hellerman versus Abenduct. And they do just barely as Abenduct has to go the distance almost here. Glass gets saved number four. Abenduct is now 7-1 and one as the Windsor Whistlers win 3-2 to two over the Salem Warlocks. But it was not easy. 12 hits and 9 hits for both squads. So it was a hitter's contest, but uh, the Whistlers just barely eked by with the, the, the win over the Warlocks. So the Whistlers are now 14-11, and 11, so a good job right there. The Virginia Beach Captains versus the Kanata Koalas. This is Earl Abbott versus Juan Villegas. And the captains were going to take the victory for nothing. So all the shutouts coming through with the aces pitching today. Rollins and Peters hit homers for the uh, Virginia Beach captains. Nothing happening for Pablo Sanchez, who's only batting 280. I would take uh, Greg Peters over Sanchez right now. So the captains are 15 and 10, which puts them in, I think, a... Not a tie for first place, but a tie for second place, I believe. The Queens Nobles versus the Kansas City Cluckers, Bosworth, and Xavier. And the Cluckers are going to take it from the Nobles. So the Nobles, who were resurging, have now lost two in a row as they're now 13 and 12. And then the Cluckers, 12 and 13, as they take the 6 to 1 victory over the Nobles. Giants are going to be playing on the road against the Kings. This is Percy Pounder versus Leah Wayne. I don't think uh, I don't think the Giants are expected to win this one, and they don't. Leo Wayne is dominant, and Percy Pounder can't get past probably five or six innings there. As the Kings will move to sixteen and nine on an eleven to one victory for the Kings. That was a disaster for the Toronto Giants right about there. Whoops, bonk. My apologies about that. The Portland Pioneers up against the Coral Springs Manatees. This is Randy Johnson versus Cody Hamilton. This should be Randy Johnson's game to lose, and it is his game to lose. The Manatees lose their game to the Portland Pioneers 7-6. In extra innings, the Portland Pioneers come back and then hold on to the victory. Don Willis again blows the save and gives up the loss. I am... Not happy with the way that uh, the Manatees have been utilizing their bullpen. Not a good performance from the Manatees as they move to 15-10, and 10, leaving the, uh, the Kings. Kings and Apollos have taken first place again. Man. All right. Robins at the Squirrels. Grace Tipton versus Christina Beatty. Beatty looking to drop that ERA back down, and she's not going to. Oh, man, a butt whooping from the Robins against the Squirrels as the Robins unleash 13, the Baker's dozen, against the Squirrels. Beatty's ERA rises to 265. Tipton gets the win. She's now 2-7, and seven, and the Robins move to 10-15. and 15. The Squirrels drop to 11-14. and 14. Homers by Vaughn, Beltron, Lundstrom, and Mills. 
for the Robins. And that's Mills' ninth home run. He has been very, very good. Very, very good performer right there for the Lansing Robins. So, standings after June 24th look like this. We officially have our original teams, except for the Ducks. The Kings and Apollos are reigning once again on top of the standings, 16-9, and nine, as the Virginia Beach captains had some problems. They're coming back, but they had some problems. And the Ducks and Manatees are falling, which is unusual for them. Normally, they are more of our reliable teams. So, interesting development right there. The Warlocks, I don't know what else you can say about the Warlocks. They're... They're pretty much done at this point. I, I would assume that they're pretty much on their way out. So moving into the last, I believe this is going to be the last game. Nope. Yeah, last game of the stream, ladies and gentlemen, with four minutes to spare. Let's get through the last game of the stream. This is the number two pitchers. Big, big matchups right here. We have the Kings and... At the captain, 16 and 9 Memphis Kings versus the 15 and 10 Virginia Beach Captains. We're going to see on top of that the Coral Spring Manatees versus the Durham Goats at the end of the evening, and then of course the Apollos are going to be at home against the Squirrels. So let's get started with everyone but the first game. So let's see if I do anything better or worse today. Hey, there we go. That's more like it. A 6-0 victory for the Toronto Giants behind a dominant pitching performance from yours truly. Seven innings, eight strikeouts, two walks, two hits. The Cluckers go down to 12-14. and 14. The Toronto Giants move up to 10-16. and 16. Homers for Keisha Phillips. And I believe that's An Andy? Andy Hayes. Yes. The Warlocks at the Pioneers. 7-18 and 18 Warlocks. Let's see if they can beat the Pioneers. The Pioneers just beat the... Um, the Houston Apollos, no, no, they beat the Captains, I believe. They beat someone really good in the last game. So the Portland Pioneers coming off of a big game win again. It took extra innings and a couple of extra home runs. But the Portland Pioneers moved to 11-15, and 15, keeping the Salem Warlocks deep in the uh, basement at 7-19. and 19. Ouch. 8-5 to five extra inning victory right there. For the Portland Pioneers. They had to... Uh, it was tied all the way through the 11th inning. So, a walk-off right there. Probably a walk-off home run for one of these guys. Because I don't... Yeah, you wouldn't need to score three runs unless it's a homer. So, interesting. All right. Mythics versus the Whistlers. This is Marquardt versus Luna. And it's going to go to the Whistlers. The Whistlers are on a roll now. Fifth homer of the season for Alex Rodriguez, but the Mythics dropped 12 and 14. The Whistlers are now 15 and 11. I think they're on a five game winning streak now. No, six game. They're on a six game winning streak, aren't they? Seven, my apologies. The Whistlers are on a seven game winning streak. They're nine and one in their last 10 games. Homers to Petrovic and Garcia Para. Another win for Luna as she goes to five and three. Wow. All right. The Apollos home against the Squirrels. Betty Houston versus Evan Screwball. And the winner is going to be the Centennial Squirrels. They take it to the Apollos. Six to three. Homers for Centennial. For Ripken Jr., Thumper McThumpers, and Fabic. Wow. So they take down the Houston Apollos, who now move to 16 and 10. Squirrels move to 12 and 14. All right, Swatter's time. Schilling versus McGavin. 12 and 13 Koalas versus the 13 and 12 Swatters. And the Swatters are dominant again. McGavin has a great performance. 6 0 shutout victory for the Swatters. Another homer by Troy Gloss, his sixth of the season. As Suter McGavin goes seven innings, nine strikeouts, three hits, two walks. Good performance for the Swatters as they continue on pace. I think the Swatters and the Windsor Whistlers are now officially our resurging teams as they have won five games and seven games in a row, respectively. The Swatters move into, what is this, fourth place? Potentially fourth place. We'll see if they can do that. So a good performance from the Swatters and from the Windsor Whistlers, putting them back in playoff contention. All right, 
the Lansing Robins look to take the Queen's Nobles to 500. They've got Pico de Gallo versus Ed Barker. And they will not, unfortunately, be able to get that advantage as Amir Khan gets his 11th save of the season. Quan gets the win. The Robins fall 4-2 against the Nobles. Jay Mills has his 10th homer of the season, but Uchida and LeBeau have homers for the Queens Nobles as they move to 14 and 12. All right, the big one, or at least the big three. Coral Spring Manatees on the road against the Durham Goats. Big game here for TJ Lowerman and his Goats against Ramona Bennett and the Coral Springs Manatees. And the Manatees destroy them. Absolutely destroy them. Riddle has a homer for the Goats, but the Manatees score 18 runs on 18 hits. As Larry Walker gets player of the day going 3 for 4 with 2 RBIs, a double, and 2 singles. Four times he scored 2 walks. Ouch, poor TJ indeed. A bad performance from the Goats. And that'll put the Coral Springs Manatees... Is that a tie for first place? No, because we have the Memphis Kings still to go. So the Manatees and the uh, Apollos are right now tied for second. So we'll see what happens about that. Downey Ducks versus the Murfreesboro Marmots. Let's see if the Marmots can take a game away from the Ducks. And they can! It's a walk-off! Raul Mondesi, again with the amazing performances just coming out of the woodworks. Nancy Chin and Jason Giambi had homers for the Downey Ducks, but they blow the game in the ninth inning. Luann Louie has a rare loss added on to her categories. And Raul Mondesi has a three-homer performance for the Murfreesboro Marmots. Five RBIs. Three homers, four for five performance. Knocks myself off of the player of the day list. And this is the second time that Mondesi has done this. This is the second time that he's come through and single-handedly won a game in extra innings. Or, like, a comeback. Yeah, the first time I think was against the Queens. I think he had a walk-off homer. No, he scored. He helped them score five runs in that game. I believe he helped them walk it off in the ninth inning. Yep, so this is his second walk-off home run in the season for Raul Mondesi. Oh my gosh, this guy is great. And um, yeah, that leaves us down to our last game of the day, guys. Last day game of the day is going to be the Memphis Kings versus the Virginia Beach Captains. All right, this is going to be Tim Hudson versus Jessica Wasarsis. This is for the, all the marbles, guys. This is for first place. First place or a four-way tie for first place. So let's see how it goes. Hudson versus Wasarsis, Virginia Beach captains, 7-5 and five at home. Memphis Kings 7-6 and six on the road. And the Memphis Kings are dominant. 13-4 victory over the Virginia Beach captains. A grand performance by their pitching staff. Hudson goes to 7-1, 2.49 ERA. Wasarsis gets her fourth loss of the season. Homers to Tim Hudson himself. Leo Wayne has her fourth. Sammy Sosa has his third. Derek Jeter has his fourth. Middleton and Guerrero have homers for Virginia Beach. But uh, that will make our standings. Like this, ladies and gentlemen, the Memphis Kings are your new first place team after the exit of June. So heading into July 1st, these, if I can get back to the standings, these are going to be your leaders for the <laughs> month of June. We will not have the four-way tie, unfortunately. We will have a single leader at the head, which is going to be the Memphis Kings. The Houston Apollos and Manatees close behind them in second. The Ducks, Captains, and Whistlers all at 15 and 11. And those Whistlers are resurging with a seven-game winning streak, by the way. The Nobles, Swatters, and Goats pull up at 14 and 12. 
Play another round to reestablish the tie. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're going to look at July 1st. Make sure that it looks good. Make any changes. Look at the number two starting pitcher. See if you want to make any changes to stuff before we do any more simulations. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of our stream for today. You can look at these statistics. Take a good look at it. See how your team is being able to do so far. I will export the statistics of every single player into the Discord. So you guys can take a look at your individual players, see how you're doing. And I hope that your team has been doing well, because mine is, mine is almost dead last. So, you know, hey, I'm not so happy about that. But either way, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being here for Episode 4 of the Science Saturday Backyard Project streams. I hope you guys had a fun time watching your teams be able to play and just the back and forth that we've had so far this season. Let me actually finish on one last screen. I want to... I want to show off just this statistic. So there you go. That's our graph. That's our graph so far for the season. So the Apollos and Kings have been flirting in the first place. The Ducks have been in first place for a little bit. The, what is that? Virginia Beach Captains were in first place for a little bit. I think the Manatees were in first place for two weeks. Um, this is going to get crazy, guys. And we're only a little over halfway done. How many teams make playoffs? Actually, that's a great question. Let me make sure I know how many we have set up for that. We are going to be seeing six teams in playoffs. Six teams go to playoffs, and it's a ladder-style playoff, which means number six team, which would be one, two, three, four, five, six. The Whistlers would play against the Captains. Winner of that would play against the Ducks. Winner of that would play against the Manatees, and so forth, until they would play against the Kings at the top. That's what it would look like if it ended right now so the nobles swatters and goats are outside of playoff contention right now they are a game behind so they've got to get started here because at this point they need to get moving and get up into the top six so again top six advance we have a ladder style playoff at that point you guys have got to be looking for your teams to turn it around here really fast we only have a couple more let's see we've got eight games in july and that's it. You have eight games left, ladies and gentlemen, to be able to make your team get into playoffs. So if you are, I mean, Salem basically is out of playoffs at this point. They are literally, I mean, what, what are they? What's their, what's their magic? What's their like, uh, I mean, I'm guessing they're probably about to be punched out of playoff potential here in a second. One more loss and I think they're done. Because they can only finish the season at 14 and 20 at that point. So, I think they're about out. And we'll have to see what happens about all that. Uh, Shovel Bryant's batting average is 260. Has not been doing so good, unfortunately, on the batting average. Uh, Gofinan is definitely the better person for a triple crown potential. Um, nine home runs, 390 batting average. Uh, Gofanon is definitely the best option for triple triple crown at the moment. They would have to win every game, and the other would have to lose every game. That's pretty much what would have to happen. The, the Warlocks would literally have to, like, win every single ball game, and all the top-tier teams would have to average back out. And I think they'd have to eke in with maybe a sixth-place playoff contention at this point. I, I don't see them really being able to have a shot at this. Um, I don't see it, is all I'm going to say about that. I think their, uh, I think their elimination number which I somehow don't have, but their elimination number is probably down to, like, one at this point. So, depending upon who they're going to be playing on this first day, which is the Goats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're done. Yeah, I think the Warlocks are done, guys. I, I think they'll be our first team to get knocked out of playoffs at this point. We're three games out of a playoff spot. Probably need to go at least seven and one. I doubt six and two will do it. Uh, which team are you in? Rough Cut? Which team are you in? The Cluckers? Yeah, Cluckers. I guessed right. Nice. Yeah, if you're uh, if you're 12 and 14 at this point, you really need to go pretty much ace aces all the way across the board at this point. Um, six and two might win you that, uh, but that would make you finish 18 and 18 and 16, and I think that's gonna be just behind some of our better performers because the Whistlers have a great spot because of the, the fact that they've got Abinduct. He can win them half of their games because of that ability to pitch. 
And that means that they're at least going to win four more games. So they're at least going to be probably guaranteed to win 19 games by the end of the season. So it was all about their number two starter. For the Whistlers, it was all about their number two starter. Could they win more than, you know, a third of Luna's games? And they have. They've won, you know, five out of the eight. No, five out of the 13 that she's done. And then, of course, they've managed to pull a couple victories of Mendelssohn. And even Tom Glass has got a win, although Tom Glass has blown a couple games too. So, But we'll see how that goes next Saturday, ladies and gentlemen. Next Saturday is the last regular season stream for the Backyard Project. And then the next week after that, we will do playoffs. And we'll see how that goes. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will get these statistics out to all of you guys so you can look at them and see what your players are doing. Thank you so much for watching again. I know I keep saying that, but thank you for being here, guys. And I will see you all next Saturday. Have a good rest of your days, guys.